How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to your favorite aviation channel and today we are here with the March 2023 update for Chicago O'Hare International Airport Terminal 5. Today's update is set at 5 p.m. so all the flights and aircraft you see in this video uh, reflect the 5 p.m. time frame for O'Hare. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, it's been a pretty hectic week and I'm on a bit of a time crunch right now so unfortunately I did not have time to set up most of the ground service vehicles for all the aircraft and stuff um, so that aspect of realism is unfortunately missing from today's video regardless I uh, got some pretty cool new additions for the airport that I'll be sure to show you all once we get there um, so that'll be something to, to look forward to but uh, without any further delay let's go ahead and get started alright so to kick off the video uh, let me give you all a brief progress update on the terminal so as you can see, I was able to paint this little wooden plank that you see here. Uh, like I mentioned in the previous update, that was one of my goals to get this painted um, before the March update. So I was able to do that. It's white for most of it, as you can see. Um, but then in real life, the new kind of expansion where it starts, it's a bit of a darker color. Um, it's, it's kind of gray. So that's why I have it painted gray from here, M26 onwards. Um, so not super great, but you know, I think I did a pretty decent job with it. I have yet to add all the windows and everything, so hopefully by the next update, um, that's the next goal. Obviously, this is a progress update. It's not completely finished yet. So all the windows and stuff, those should hopefully be added by the next update for this section, and not only that, also the the main head house. So here and then all of that, they should all hopefully have the window decals and all that added um, by the April update. So that'll be nice when it's all said and done, complete. Uh, I can't wait to see how the finished product will look there. So now starting with the actual aircraft of the update, uh, we're going to do things a bit differently this time. We're going to start off with the uh, taxiway first and then finish off with the uh, terminal itself. Um, so we got some departures for runway 22 left and also 28 right here. Uh, the first one is a 22 left departure, American Eagle Ember 145 operated by Envoy Air. Um, only about little over a month actually until these are completely gone from Envoy Air and either they'll be retired completely or some will be, I think the majority of them are going to get transferred to Piedmont Airlines but uh, Envoy Air is going to be ending their Ember 145 operations in May so I'm going to do my best to get as many of these as I can before they're officially gone because Champagne unfortunately uh, once Envoy ends the 145 operations they won't be coming to Champagne anymore because uh, we are an Envoy Air maintenance base, and so even if they all get transferred to Piedmont, we won't be seeing them here because Piedmont doesn't have a maintenance base in Champaign. So we'll be only be seeing the Ember 175 and 170 uh, for the summer, and then from, I think, August or something, we'll see the CRJ200 and Ember 175. So anyway, this is the Envoy Air 145. This is going to go off to La Crosse, Wisconsin as Flight 3928. Uh, this particular aircraft is November 928. Alpha Echo, um, which still operates. It actually came to Champaign today, um, I believe from Chicago, of course. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Uh, next up is the another American Eagle ERJ-145. This one's operated by Piedmont, um, and this aircraft is going to go off to Norfolk, Virginia, as Flight 6001. Uh, next up is a 28 right departure, American 737-800 with the Eagle winglets. Um, I've noticed that 4 to 5 p.m. is a mainly an American Airlines departure bank. There's a lot of, it's mostly American departs, American Airlines departures in that time frame. Not many, um, I mean, there are United flights departing, but um, it's mainly dominated by American, that sort of time frame. But um, this 737-800 is departing off to Los Angeles as flight 1502. And next up is another 738 for American. This one's going to Miami as flight 2323. Behind that's United Ember 175. Uh, this aircraft is going off to uh, Nashville as flight 5915. We got United 777-200. Um, this one's a non-ER. I mean, the model itself is an ER, but I'm having it operate as one of the domestic non-ER 777-200s. This one's going off to Houston as flight 1411. Um, all of the, the uh, United Legacy 777-200s, they all have these... Uh, their engines are all blue now, so none of them have the gray engines anymore. Um, they all have either half gray, half blue cowlings, or completely blue cowlings. So I don't think there's any of these left with the uh, just, well, the GE90 ones, the con X Continental ones, they still have gray engines, I believe, but uh, at least the ones in the old livery, of course, do. 
Um, but these, the ones that are Legacy United with Pratt & Whitney engines, they don't have any fully gray engines because after the engine issues that were occurring, you know, back in 2021, most of 2022, they were all grounded. Um, United decided for some reason to put blue cowlings on all the Pratt & Whitney engines just to signify that, you know, the maintenance work had been carried out or something like that. So maybe just for fun in the future, I might paint the engines on this just to make it realistic. Um, that'd be a pretty cool project, but um, if I have the time, I'll do that. But that's going off to Houston. Uh, behind that's A319 going to uh, Washington, Reagan, DCA, it's flight 435. Spirit A320 Neo behind that going to Orlando, 1705, flight 1705, Orlando. And then behind that's the uh, retro livery American Eagle Ember 170, operated by Envoy Air. Can't wait to see this in Champaign. Actually came to Champaign a few weeks ago um, on a diversion. It diverted because of bad weather in Chicago. Um, but it was dark, cold, windy, and rainy out, so I couldn't go see it. But it did come here a few weeks ago. Um, but we, we will be getting it hopefully regularly because the 170 is supposed to do the Chicago flights um, effective from May 5th here to Champaign. So I can't wait to see that. Um, anyway, this is going off to, uh, where is this going? Um, let's go to Providence, Rhode Island. It's flight 3428. We got an American Ember 175. Uh, which one is this? I think this is the Republic one. Yeah, this one's going to go to Indianapolis. It's flight 4212, I think. And then here's the Envoy Ember 175. This one's going to go to Westchester County, White Plains, New York. It's flight 3344. That's the flight I took um, last week, uh, last Friday or two Fridays ago. Um, it's already been two weeks, that's crazy. Um, but yeah, when I went to New York last week for spring break, uh, this is the flight I took over there. I was actually supposed to fly this exact plane, can you believe it? This is a 233NN. I was actually scheduled to fly it, but we unfortunately had an aircraft uh, aircraft swap, and we were scheduled on, uh, we actually flew 280NN, but it was a cool flight, my first flight ever on the 175. Um, so long overdue, but yeah, nice flight. And last but not least, the taxiway conga line, United Express CRJ 200, operated by SkyWest, going down to Decatur, Illinois, which is about 40 minutes from here in Champaign. And that's also a EAS essential air service route. All right, so starting off with the terminal now, of course, with the Delta side first, we'll start off with gate M2. We have this Delta Airbus A220-100, came in from New York LaGuardia as flight 1264, and it'll be headed off to Boston later as flight 1247. Next at gate M3, I believe, uh, I think in the last update, these parking stands were a bit different. I think this was kind of crooked this way. This one was also kind of that way. Um, it's kind of inaccurate. I realized that this one is actually more this way and this one's actually more straight. Uh, so I ended up fixing that for this video, which is good, I guess. Um, but next up at M3 is a CRJ900 for Delta Connection. Filling in for a 717 because I do not have a 717 right now. A lot of 717s and Ember 175 flights from here, um, both of which I ironically do not have, and a lot more A220 flights as well. Um, but yeah, we'll fix that in the future, hopefully. Um, but the CRJ900 came in from Detroit, and it's gonna, it's gonna go off to Minneapolis later. They do a lot of that, you know, flip-flopping. One aircraft comes from Detroit, it goes to Minneapolis, and then another one comes in from Minneapolis and goes to Detroit. And then same thing for New York and Boston, which is pretty cool. And a bunch of empty gates. Here's M9, I think. No, I'm pretty sure it's M9, unless I'm mixing it up with M8. Um, but 757 here, of course, had to put this in, flight 2738, uh, from and back to Atlanta. There we go. And then at gate M11 is the 737-900ER. Also substituting for a 717, this came in from Minneapolis. S flight 1506 and it's going to go to Detroit S flight uh, 2361 so basically the opposite of the CRJ 900 so yeah desperately a need for some 717s here and hopefully some E175s if Gemini Jets ever releases those okay moving on to the international the, the heavies uh, internationals of course as well um, gate M13 or sorry wait is this M13 14 yeah or no I don't know, I keep, I, oh, I always get these gates mixed up, it's so annoying. Um, whatever gate this is, Scandinavian Airbus A330-300, this is uh, operating flight 946 back to Stockholm. It's a 5 p.m. departure, so there we go, it's pushing back right now. And first new model of the update, 
very excited to have this. The lighting is, actually it's better over here. Unfortunate that the gate is in the way, but Air France A350-900. Yeah, finally got Air France. I'm really happy to have this. Um, shout out to Star Alliance, man. I actually bought this off of him. Didn't even know I was buying it from him on eBay um, until I realized the name looked really familiar. So thank you, man, for for uh, letting me buy this off you. It's a great model. It's in great condition. And this is by Aviation 400, so the mold is really nice. It's one of the best A350-1400 uh, scale molds out there. If I dare say it's even better than NG, to be honest. It's really nice, solid mold. Um, but yeah, this is Air France flight 136 from Paris Charles de Gaulle and I believe it's a 5.30 p.m. departure so it'll be departing very soon back to Paris as flight uh, 137 and uh, of course I literally just found this out a few days ago Air France is going to be switching to the 7879 for the summer season so of course after I buy this model I figure that out but oh well <laughs> it's, of course it always happens to me but let me know if you can relate to that it's, Always here in Chicago, these airlines are always flip-flopping between planes. KLM is another example. They Every other day, it's a new plane. So KLM next, next door at gate number, I think this is M16. Yeah, uh, 777-300ER. They don't even fly this here now. They fly the 777-200ER and the 787-9. And then starting next week, it's going to be the 787-10. So... Yeah, but the 333 is the, the best out of all of them, in my opinion. Uh, but this is KLM Flight 612 back to Amsterdam. That's a 5, 515 or something departure. They all depart at 5 o'clock, it seems. So, yeah, KLM is Flight 611. It's back to Amsterdam as um, Flight 612. They used to be arriving. They used to arrive around 7 p.m. for whatever reason back in January, February. They tweaked their schedule, so they arrived at 7, departed at 10. Um, a few weeks ago, they finally tweaked it back to what it was before, so they arrive at like 2 p.m. now and they're back to their usual departure time at 5 p.m. That's how it usually was. I don't know what happened that caused them to tweak their schedule to, to a later schedule at O'Hare. Might have been because of the staffing or staffing shortages at Schiphol Airport, but um, that's just a conjecture from my part. Um, so yeah, it's nice to have KLM and Air France side by side. If you can see the logo on the Air France, the Air France KLM group sticker there. So pretty cool to have them side by side now. Just Really nice to see that. All right, here we go. Long awaited debut of the uh, British Airways Airbus A380. Here we go at Chicago here. Um, even though this, this has been flying here for almost four or five years now, I think they started flying it in 2019 to O'Hare. Um, or maybe it was, I think it was early 2019, like February or something. But yeah, finally got the BA380. This was uh, actually purchased from one of my good subscribers and viewers. Uh, thank you, Ryan, for this amazing model. I bought a couple other models off of him, but this is the only one that you're going to see in the O'Hare updates for the time being, until Qantas starts flying here at least. Um, so this one is operating flight 295. Well, that's what it landed as, flight 295 from London Heathrow, and we'll be departing very shortly. I think a 5.30, 5.15 departure back to Heathrow as flight uh, 294. All right, so of course this is gate M17. It's the only gate at any of the O'Hare terminals that's A380 compatible. So it's got that jetway, this one on the left here, that actually extends up to the upper deck, the door right above the, the R. Um, unfortunately, the one that I have here is not long or tall enough to get up there. So hopefully by the next update, I'll change these jetways out for some that can actually extend all the way up there. We'll see if I actually do that. Um, so yeah, uh, like I said, this model I bought off of one of my subscribers who reached out. Thank you so much, Ryan, once again for this. Um, unfortunately, this model did not come in its actual, like, Gemini Jets box. It actually um, came in a, a different box. It didn't have the proper packaging. So, um, because it shipped all the way from the UK, it unfortunately did suffer a bit of damage. Um, thankfully, you can't really tell I was able to somewhat fix it. But um, if you notice, this engine right here, the rightmost engine, I believe that's number four, I, I always get these mixed up, but um, this was completely broken off and uh, it was actually in pieces. The, you know, the back part, I, I'm blanking on the term, but that was completely out of it. So it was like a Skymarks 1400 scale model. I had to put the entire engine back together and fix it on there. Um, so you can see it is a bit bent. And then both of the wing tips are actually kind of damaged. This one was twisted, the top part. Um, but I was able to twist it back and you can still kind of tell that it was kind of deformed. 
there and then this one unfortunately I tried uh, twisting back but it just snapped off and uh, yeah it was this one was probably the worst one because it was the tip the top tip of the wing tip that was a uh, you know twisted and it was the smallest part so I couldn't really do much with it so as soon as I tried bending it back to its original place it just snapped off so um, I will be keeping the, the model though it's overall in pretty decent condition the landing gear was also broken so uh, but those are all completely fine now thankfully um, but I am planning to get another one of these a uh, prop like a completely new A380 so hopefully you'll see that soon but uh, I will be keeping the model though because it is still a pretty good one um, but I would also just prefer to have a like a proper 380 so still really nice to have it and I'm glad I was able to get it in time for the uh, for this update so again Ryan if you're watching this thank you so much of course that, that wasn't your fault it was of course just the the nature of the shipping I guess but uh, really really happy to have this nonetheless alright next up uh, gate M18 uh, Cutler Airways 777-300 ER um, this is in between flights from and to Doha flight 725 in flight 726 back out um, this will be the last update for now where you'll see the 777 um, because say today you're watching this is March 25th effective from tomorrow and there goes my phone but effective from tomorrow March 26th they are going to actually be switching this flight to the A350-1000 which is crazy because they haven't flown that here since 2021 I think so it's pretty cool cool to see that back in the next update you'll probably see both the Qatar, the Qatar and the Etihad 350 1000 so that'll be nice um, but it really happened so suddenly didn't know they were bringing the 350 back but they are and uh, hopefully you'll see that in the next next update by April next up at gate M19 we've got the uh, Royal Jordanian Boeing 787-8 came in from Amman as flight 263 it's gonna go back out later as flight 264 uh, gate M20 Right, M20. Emirates 777-300ER. Of course, if you didn't know, Emirates actually came out with a new livery, <laughs> like a few days ago or last week, I guess. Um, it's probably one of the most pointless livery changes I've ever seen, but I'm not one to judge, obviously, because um, it's really not much different than what this one is. If anything, this livery right now that Emirates has is a bit more fresh looking than the new one that they just came out with, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, Emirates has a new livery, so they won't be repainting their planes that quickly. The 777s, I guess, won't be repainted until, won't be starting the repaint process until at least late 2023 or early 2024, I don't know, but they have one 380 so far, as far as I'm aware. Um, but it'll be a while before we see the new livery in Chicago, at least. So, uh, but this 777-300ER came in from Dubai as flight 235. Gonna go back out to Dubai as flight 236 at 7.15. Or, yeah, I think it's a 7.15 departure. At M21 is the uh, United 787-10. Normally, the I noticed this, the United and American flights, they uh, mostly park on the complete furthest end. I guess it has something to do with uh, the fees for parking at Terminal 5. They're cheapest on the end points of the terminal one of my subscribers or viewers mentioned that on one of my videos so huge thanks for this comment because it's a really cool information to to know and actually makes a lot more sense why all you see on the end of the terminal at least most of the time is united and american aircraft and also southwest so makes a lot more sense now but um yeah most of the time because i guess the fees the parking fees at terminal 5 are cheapest on the furthest end of the terminal for this ends both the Delta side and the new expansion side but most of the time you'll see the United International Arrivals and American International Arrivals and of course Southwest because they have no other choice um, most of the time they will be on the furthest side um, which is in this case the new expansion but not today so this 78710 is here from Frankfurt came in as flight 906 and he is just offloading getting bags off all that good stuff taxing in for M24 Four is the Swiss A330-300. Um, they should be switching back to this by the end of the month. Currently, it's the 340-300. Um, but I believe by April, it'll be back to 330s, and then the 777 will be coming back in the summer. But anyway, this is here from Zurich as flight number 8, of course. Gonna dock at M24 here. M25 
empty gate, and then M26, M27 are also empty. M27 still doesn't exist yet, as far as I'm aware. And here are the Southwests, M28 and 29. So right here we have the 737 MAX 8, which is here from Denver as flight 2107. It'll be continuing onwards to Nashville with the same flight number that came in today. As a matter of fact, it was actually a MAX on today's date at least. We have a 737-700 at gate number M29, and this came in from Phoenix as flight 2896, continuing to Dallas Love Field as flight 3017. And as I said earlier with the United and all the U.S. international flights, as you can see, it's just mainly those on this side, because just, I, I assume the fees, the parking fees are so cheap. The further you move away from the center of the terminal, the cheaper they get. That's at least what that comment said, but uh, here at M, M32, right? Yeah, United 787-9. This one is here from Tokyo Haneda as flight 882. And over here at M34, 30, yeah, 34, right? It's a 350 1000 actually parked here today. I was checking the flight, parked over at M34. Um, this came from Abu Dhabi, of course, is flight 151. And then at M30, Oh boy, M36, I think, yeah, 767-300, you are from United, came from London, Heathrow, as flight 928, and yes, yeah, so three wide bodies side by side here. I actually did see this in person when I was flying out of O'Hare a few weeks ago. Royal Jordanian was parked here, Iberia was here, and ANA was there, so it was really cool to see that, and I kind of recreated it here, not with the exact same planes, but nonetheless, three wide bodies. The gates are so confusing, it's really hard to play with these, but um, I did my best, but nice to recreate that, of course. Next at M3038, wait, what? 39, no, this is 37, I'm so sorry, I'm completely out of it. This is the 737-900ER from United in the Continental Retro livery, came from Cancun, Mexico, it's flight 1196, so it's just offloading, getting the passengers through customs. And another flight from Cancun, Frontier A321, this is uh, M38, and it came in as flight 45 from Cancun. And first time I'm putting an American widebody in these uh, regular updates. I'm surprised I haven't done that yet. But 7879, I think the lighting is better over here, sorry. Yeah, here we go. Gate M39, American 787-9, here from London Heathrow as flight 47, so it's got all off the got all the passengers offloaded and cargo offloaded it should be getting pushed back and uh, taxiing back to Terminal 3 for its next departure which will probably be back to London because that's kinda the only place they fly these unless Paris no they don't they don't fly them to Paris as far as I'm aware I think the 7878 goes to Paris and the only Dash 9 route internationally we have is the the London flight I could be wrong but in the summer it, it, we get more of them like Paris, I believe, upgages to a 9, and it's mostly London, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> so yeah, an M40 empty, as usual. Not as usual, but it's, it's empty. So, <laughs> that concludes the March 2023 O'Hare Terminal 5 update. Hope you all enjoyed it. I apologize if it felt a bit rushed. Again, again like I said, I'm on a bit of a time crunch. I have to get back to campus as soon as possible tonight, got some projects and assignments to work on, but in the meantime, because I do come home for, uh, I do come home Wednesdays for a little bit, um, that's mainly the time where I get the, get the chance to film these uh, Terminal 5 updates, but uh, yeah, I apologize if it did feel a bit rushed, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Um, this video is coming out on Saturday, 25th. Um, didn't say this in the beginning of the video, but Ramadan Kareem to everybody celebrating around the world. Hope you all that are celebrating and this is a message for myself as well. Make the most out of this momentous and uh, blessed month. So, um, yeah, that's it for, for this video. Again, by the next update, my major goals are to have the windows done for the entirety of this, this portion. And this portion, hopefully, we'll have that all set. And then, oh, exciting stuff. By the next update, hopefully, we will have... Aer Lingus making their debut finally because I do have one of those models on order, the A330. Uh, I also have another Lot 787, the Dash 9 on order. Got that for a really good deal. It's the standard livery, so finally we'll have a regular livery Lot 787 for the updates instead of the special livery Dash 8 that I have. Aside from that, we still are missing Air New Zealand, Viva Aerobus, Air Serbia, 
they don't fly here yet. They'll be flying here in May. Uh, we don't have, I said Air New Zealand, right? Yeah, we don't have Austrian. We don't have, what's the, what's the, what are they called? I forgot, I'm blanking on the name. Finnair, we don't have either, but Finnair is seasonal, so they won't be flying here till at least May. I'm just going to double check my list real quick. Okay, so we got all of them, yeah. Austrian, Air Serbia, Air New Zealand, and Viva Aerobus. And then WestJet, oh my goodness, WestJet is coming back to O'Hare in May. Um, and the reason I'm, I sound like that is because they literally were just here. Um, for those who don't know, WestJet used to fly Calgary to Chicago with the 737-700 until like 2018 or 2019, they ended service. I think it was 2018, like spring 2018. They cut that route. And then 2021, with the border reopenings, they restarted flights to Chicago, this time from Toronto, and not on the 737, but on the Q400, for whatever reason, they thought that would work. Um, thing is, the Q400 is a propeller plane. It's really small, so it doesn't use the jetways. They had to park it at the remote stand, so you had to get bussed over there to that plane to board it or deboard it get bussed from there to the terminal so didn't really work out and they cut that route and i think late 2021 or something like that so, no, no sorry late 2022 so it didn't even last more than a year but now they're coming back in may um with the 737 800 i believe again from calgary so gonna have to get one of those by may so that's a bit of an update for o'hare i might be missing a couple things and i might regret not mentioning them later on but that's all I can remember to mention for this video. So thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Leave a comment with any suggestions or feedback, any you know routes you want to see for future videos, updates. And that's it. So thank you again for watching. And uh, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.